Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girlfriend and Ungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Swani Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. A big shout out to everyone that keeps on subscribing, has subscribed. Keeps on giving us stuff to do, likes our stuff, shares. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. I hope you guys are doing all right. I may you stay blessed. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to Jewish woman wanted to see Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. When you're deeply focused on your work, you forget how it looks to others. Unless, like me, you're an agnostic Jew. <laughs> what you're deeply focused on is Islam, and you've just finished writing a biography of Muhammad. And your audience might be just a little bit nervous. <laughs> to the question of how come I decided to write about Muhammad, my immediate answer is, how not? We're talking about one of the most influential figures of all time. A man who radically changed his world and is still changing ours. So how can so many of us know so little about him? How come just the idea of writing about him seems to be fraught with tension? Welcome to my territory. The vast and volatile arena in which politics and religion intersect. Consider the renewed atmosphere of distrust and bitterness this past summer, for instance, when a noxious little YouTube video caricaturing Muhammad sparked protests leading to dozens of deaths. There were any number of agendas involved here, none of them good. That of the small-minded bigots who made the video in the first place. Small-minded bigots being a redundant phrase, if ever there was one. Um, of the Saudi financed TV station in Cairo that picked it up and made a big show of it, thus ensuring that while maybe 30 people had seen it before, now millions would. Of the once reputable news magazine trying to revive its fading readership by implying that all Muslims worldwide were rioting in the streets, as opposed to a few hundred extremists and often just a few dozen. It's amazing what you can do by cropping a photograph and the usual American Islamophobes putting up crude us and them posters in the New York and DC subways. So many people jumping on the bandwagon. But where was Muhammad himself in all this? Where was the man who listened to the Quran telling him, and by extension all Muslims, to pay no attention to taunts and mockery? Ignore them, it keeps saying. Let them be. Turn your face away. Or in the words of Jesus, turn the other cheek. While Muhammad has certainly been distorted by his, by his detractors, he sometimes seems to have been equally distorted by the loudest of his self-proclaimed defenders, which makes it all the more urgent that we know who he really was. Yet the millions, if not billions, of words that have been written about him often seem to obscure as much as they reveal. The more of them I ploughed through, the more it felt as though he were being weighed down by the sheer accumulated mass of them. What I wanted was a real feel for the man himself. I wanted the vitality and complexity of a full life lived. I wanted, in short, to see Muhammad whole. And this meant steering clear of a virtual minefield of agendas, including piety and sentiment and stereotype and judgmentalism. So even as the hundreds of research volumes piled up on my floor, my most valuable research tool may have been this one-word reminder pinned beside my desk. Think. Take the pivotal moment of Islam, for instance, which is what happened to, to Muhammad one night in the year 610 
on a mountain just outside Mecca. He'd gone up there, it seems, in the hope of perhaps a quiet moment of insight. The last thing he expected was the blinding weight of revelation. So what struck me in the earliest account we have of that night was not even so much what happened as what did not happen. Muhammad did not come floating off the mountain as though walking on air. He did not run down shouting hallelujah and bless the Lord. He did not radiate light and joy. There were no choirs of angels, no music of the spheres, no elation, no ecstasy, no golden aura surrounding him. Not even the whole of the Quran fully revealed, but only five brief verses. In short, he did none of the things that might make it easy to cry foul, to put down the whole account as an invention, a cover for something as mundane as personal ambition. Quite the opposite. In his own reported words, he was convinced at first that what had happened couldn't have been real. At best, he thought it had to have been a, a, a hallucination, his own mind working against him. At worst, possession, and he'd been seized by an evil jinn, a spirit out to deceive him, even crush the life out of him. In fact, his first instinct was to leap off the highest cliff and escape the terror of what he'd experienced by putting an end to all experience. Whether you believe the words he heard that night came from inside himself or from outside, it seems absolutely clear that Muhammad did experience them, and that he did so with a force that would transform himself, his sense of himself and his world. So that initial panicked disorientation, that sundering of everything familiar, that feeling of being overwhelmed by force larger than anything the mind can comprehend, strikes me as utterly real. It's the only response that makes sense. It's the only sane response, the only human one. And this is what allowed me to begin to see Muhammad not as a symbol, and not even as a subject, but as a man, a, a, a complex human being and to follow the extraordinary arc of his life from neglected orphan to acclaimed leader, from marginalized outsider to the ultimate insider, from powerlessness to power. One thing I knew from the beginning, however, if I was to do justice to this remarkable story, if I was to bring it alive on the page, it had to be written in good faith. Now, I do realize there may be a certain irony in an agnostic standing here talking about good faith, but there's been so much bad faith in every sense of the term, and we have to get beyond it, all of us. Whether we're secular or religious, theist or atheist or anywhere in between, we are all impacted by the words and actions of extremists. What happens in one tiny corner of the world now reverberates globally. But whether we live in Tehran or in Tel Aviv, in New York or in New Delhi, we do have a choice. We can refuse. Refuse, that is, to allow ourselves to be led by anger and suspicion. Refuse to allow ourselves to be manipulated by extremists of all stripes, refuse their narrow vision, their comic book distortions, their miserably small minds. We have to reclaim the narrative, the full narrative, beyond stereotypes, beyond snap judgments, beyond headscarves. Just as we need to see Muhammad whole, so we need to start seeing each other whole in good faith. Thank you. Thank you.
right now there's a bug and it's just terrifying me this is why i don't like the rain the rainy season otherwise this is the best thing that i've had this week i mean the week is too young but this is the best thing that i've had stop letting people dictate what you see and how you see it put your biasness aside stop stop letting these small-minded people think for you think for yourself don't judge a book by its cover first read the contents of the book otherwise this was amazing loved the message loved everything about this i don't know when this was this thing went on but otherwise love this and i hope you guys love it as well is it just me or people have been giving me muhammad stuff to look uh to react to back to back or this is just a coincidence otherwise love this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video <music>